Yo my people them, CFC release blue back with another video in this the player range video for the Chelsea versus Brentford game in the Premier League which ended 2-0 to Brentford man these guys already know I'm gonna go through each player that played whether they started or came off the bench as well as giving the manager Pochettino his rating so before we get into it let me know your man of the match in the comments section below. Any thoughts and opinions you have of the match? Let me know in the comments as I will be replying to every single comment. So, yeah, man. And um, like, share and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any new Chelsea videos from me. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. But now, let's get into it. And obviously going to start off with Robert Sanchez. And Robert Sanchez, like... Brentford only had three shots on target. Like, we're going to be honest. You made one good save as well, where I thought Brentford would have scored the opportunity, but you handled that well, put your arm into the correct position and saved it. So that's calm as well. But yeah, other than that, the other two chances that they had on target resulted in goals. I'm not going to say that they're realistically both your faults. The second one, more to do with you, because obviously you've gone up because you know that we need a goal. I don't know whether Poch has told you to go up or what. But yeah, you went up. And then the counter-attack, two on one. You're the one person in the team against two Brentford players. We know what's going to happen. And they did score. But I'm not necessarily going to say that. Obviously, that's down to you. Just down to the situation that we was in. Which if we had attackers putting the ball in the back of the net, we wouldn't have needed you to. But it is what it is. My rating for you... I'm going to give you um I give you a 5.5. .5. Then right back, Axel de Sassi. And de Sassi, like playing right back is confusing me because times where Malagusto and Reese James are either suspended and injured, we play Kukurea there. And now we got them both on the bench and we're playing Axel de Sassi right back and Kukurea left back or whatever. We could have played Cole. Kovo there or whatever and played the Sassy centre back. So I think he's been having a good season for us, being normally the centre back. But clearly in the right back position things change. And um he's not gonna be helping the right winger, Noni Madweki doubling up, overlapping and that because he just doesn't have the pace, which I understand. If you put yourself high up, we're always gonna be susceptible to the counter attack. But I feel like the defence overall wasn't our weakest link and as usual is normally our strongest part. So my rating for you, Axel de Sassi, I'm going to give you a six. Then we have Thiago Silva. And Thiago, another decent performance from you, good performance. Obviously trying to organize the defense, telling them to watch the back post, which guys should have done better for. Or just guys at the front, Sterling, Kukurek should have done better. Is what is, and we ended up conceding. I can't really say anything bad about your performance. You had a decent performance. So my rating for you, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a six as well. Then, actually, I'm going to give you a 6.5. And then, Levi Kowal, like, not too much to go through. Like, Brentford weren't really on us that much. So I'm also going to give you a 6.5 as... I don't feel like you did anything wrong. So, yeah, man. Left back, Marco Correa. What's jarring is the fact that I wish that you was Marcos Alonso in this scenario because you found yourself in very, very good positions to help us score goals. But you, you are not a finisher. You're not a goal scorer at all. And your shot went straight into the keeper. Like... And then when you deep the um, how Brentford scored, should have done better, especially Sterling on that part. But we're gonna leave him for later. But yeah, my Kukurea, not the best performance. So I'm gonna give you um, like it's not your best performance, but it's not the worst one. So I'm gonna give you a six as well. Then we have defense midfielders, Moises Caicedo, someone who consistently has good performances, but when we lose. You won't get talked about enough, but I will talk about you because I notice the good things that you do, the progressive passes that you do, the running that you do, tackles, like everything defensively 
like we were like we are very fine with you and just drawing that obviously in these circumstances you're not going to get bigged up as much but i will big you up you had a good performance and easily one of the most consistent players at chelsea this season and yeah my rating for you i'm gonna give you um, a 6.5 then we have conor gallagher and defense midfield again not the same role as what you play against Arsenal, where I felt like you had a very, very good performance, but performance was decent. I'm going to give you um I'm gonna give you a six calm performance. I didn't feel like there's really a lot going wrong with the midfield and the defense. It's everything above that, which we're about to get into. So yeah. Six for you, Conor Gallagher. Then on the left. Raheem Sterling, man. Oh my god. I am finding it so frustrating, finding you so frustrating because I've been saying it. Teams 15th and below, relegation bound teams, you will turn up for one against an important game. Like, I need you to score goals. I need you. All of this dribbling and all of this stuff, you're not even creating chances like that. Like, finish your dinner. Please finish it because the most experienced player. In the attack. Yeah. You can't finish. You need three or four chances to score one. You can't be one and one. One and two at the bare minimum. You can't rely upon you like that. This is why it's so jarring. Because you are literally in the prime of your career. And look at what you're offering us. I'm sick and tired of this. Because you're the most inconsistent player in this attack. And it's so jarring because you're getting held to a high standard. And you're playing 90 minutes. Every single game, basically, man. And what are you doing with it? Like, it's so frustrating, fam. Because man should be relying upon you to be the spark. But no, man's got to be relying upon someone like Christopher Nkunku. Someone that hasn't even played in the Premier League yet. You've been playing here your whole life. And yet you can't do things consistently well. Like, look where we are in the table. We're outside the top half. And it's down to our attackers. Because we don't score enough goals. And you're the main culprit for it. So, my rating for you, I'm going to give you a four. I feel like you should have done way better. And even for breakfast call, you should why are you walking? Like four for you, Raheem Sterling. Then Noni Madweki on the right hand side. People are gonna be talking about, oh uh, yeah, other than the shot that he did. What do you do? He doesn't take on his man enough. He had one successful dribble, fair enough. But when you're factoring that Brentford will have a five back, playing with bare defenders, doubling up on Noni Madweki, Noni Madweki has no opportunities with someone to overlap him and da 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 like you're not even playing the whole game like i don't know what people expect but yet he came closer than any other chelsea attacker to scoring a goal so marrying for knowing madweki i'm gonna give him a 5.5 the decent performance you only played about 60 side minutes so you didn't get a chance to throw out the whole game where someone like raheem sterling stinking up the whole joint throughout the whole game you get taken off. Fair enough, in it? But yeah, 5.5 .5 for you. Decent performance. And bearing in mind, he's not the finished oracle. He doesn't play many games as well. Noni Medweki for us doesn't start enough. So keep that in mind, people. But yeah, 5.5 .5 for him. Then Cole Palmer. Again, best player on the pitch. Most influential player. Look at him, like, if you see the impact that this guy has picking up the ball, he had 104 touches. 104 touches. Like, guys, if you're, if you're not the person that's meant to be the creator, meant to be someone that we're looking to to create stuff or do things, you don't have that many touches. He is having it. And bearing in mind, like, he's one of the, new, he like one of the newest Chelsea signers, and yet he's doing this stuff consistently. Like, I feel sorry for him because with everything that he created for us, we should have scored. We should have had goals. But no, everything he's doing is going to waste because it's not resulting in anything good. And it's just jarring because man's looking at a young boy like this who's 21, 20 years old, and he's doing all this stuff. Yet we have other guys like Raheem Sterling who is doing what? Like, so frustrating. But again, Cole Palmer, man of the match for you. I'm going to give you a 7.5. Very good game. And I just can't wait until we have someone like Nkunku in this team because with you and Nkunku playing the same playing the same team, that will help us 
benefit us way more. Even having Modric in the squad will help us even way more because for well, like him not being in the squad, being the team just didn't do well for us. But yeah, man, Cole Palmer, great performance. Man of the match, 7.5. Big you up. And then we have Nicholas Jackson. And Jackson, I'm tired, fam. I'm tired. That shot you took yesterday, like, I don't understand why. You might have just should have passed it to the goalkeeper. You should have passed it to the goalkeeper, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, because what was that shot? Niche. Nothing. Nothing. And, like, what do you obviously do for the rest of the game? Like, all this link-up play and all of this kind of stuff, this is not things that we should be talking about being a striker's main thing. We should be talking about goals. But the only goals you've scored is against Brighton in the Carabao Cup, Luton, and Burnley. Games that in the grand scheme of things ain't going to be doing much for us. Only the Carabao Cup game can actually have an influence to we go through to the next round. But the other two, what have they been doing for us? Please, we would have won the game without them goals. We would have won the game without your goals. What are you doing? When it's time for you to be, to do something, really, like other than pre-season where Nkunku, for me, is the reason why you're playing so well now. It's like, what are you really doing? Not a lot. Not consistent enough and the fact that Broja is out like it just makes you be the only striker there which is why we probably should need to get another striker because trying to get top four Champions League football with you it's looking long it's looking so impossible I'd be real to you because you just don't score enough you just don't so yeah man I'm also going to give you a four because that was an abysmal performance I must say but then we're going to go into the substitutes now Start off with Reese James. I don't understand why Malagusta didn't come on, but yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna give you a five, Reese James. Five. Ian Matson came on. I don't really know what he was doing. The attack, the attack looked toothless and that. So I'm gonna give you a four point five, Ian Matson. Then we have David Washington making his debut. Congratulations on making your debut for Chelsea. Big you up. Look forward to seeing more of you and seeing what you can do. But yeah, I'm going to give you a five. Leslie Gutruku came on as well. I'm going to give him a five also. But then, now we're going to move on to Maurizio Pochettino, the manager. And Poch, find it very frustrating as to why Malo Gusto didn't start. I was Axel De Sassi playing, like, unless there's some underlying injuries that guys would have had, but I don't think it would have been because... Malagosto played last week, trained all week. There was no injury report. I don't see why he didn't start. Why is Axel de Sassi starting? Because he doesn't offer anything going forward for Noni Madweki. Like, he's he like he's double teamed. Can't offer that much. Like, I don't understand why Malagosto didn't play. That, like, he didn't come off the bench or anything. Reece James doesn't even look 100% fit. So... But yeah, he played, you must be trying to get him ready for Tottenham. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, that's one thing I don't understand. The other thing I don't understand is why Raheem Sterling continuously plays 90 minutes when he's just doing niche. When he's absolutely just doing niche. <sighs> Ian Matson came on. Like, I don't know, man. The substitutions didn't really make any sense to me. The starting 11. I would, I would say that obviously the starting 11 is a good enough 11 to get the W. Because as we saw in the first half, we should have been scoring goals. We should have been having at least one or two goals in the first half. But it wasn't the case because the attack, we don't have enough reliable attackers. So, yeah, man. Like, you put a good enough team to get the W, but the substitution didn't help. Um, Malagosto, I feel like, should have started. Other than that, you're not really to blame. A lot of the players are to the blame and realistically the attackers. So it is what it is, man. But my reign for you, I'm going to give you a six. But yeah, man, that's going to be the player reigns for me. Done. You guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Who was your man of the match? Let me know your thoughts and opinions as I will be coming, replying to your comments. So yeah, let me know. And also follow me. On Instagram, X, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook for more Chelsea content. I'm CFC Redis Blue, and I'm out. Peace. Come on, Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea.